Hey, I'm Joey Landreth, and this is me and my guitar for Total Guitar. This is a guitar built by Alex Sorokin, so it's sort of called a Sorokin, um, and he's based out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, and uh, it doesn't really have a model number, obviously. It's based on a classic instrument, um, but uh, this is this is 0008, which is the serial number. Um, and uh, affectionately, he and I both call it Goldie Han Solo, uh, just because we thought that was funny. And um, uh, yeah, so the, the kind of story behind it is there's there's a bit of a, a saga, but it's it started. I was on tour in Western Canada, and um, I, I I always stop in music shops to see if anybody's got any cool used fuzz pedals. Um, and so I had stopped into Stang Guitars, which is a great shop in Edmonton, and, uh, and said, hey, what, what do you got for fuzz pedals? And they sort of gave me a pile, and uh, what about a cool guitar? And then they handed me um, an LPJ made by Alex, um, which at first I thought, because it, it had been relicked with such care that I thought, it, I've played a lot of vintage guitars, and I thought it was a real old one, and, and so I, I must have played it for an hour and said, hey, what year is that anyway? And they said, uh, you know, oh, it's, it's a 2016 or something like that. And I was just blown away um, at, the, at the incredible detail. He gets, like his relicking has, he, you know, he, he himself, Alex, has worked on a, lot of old, uh, on a lot of old guitars, and he's sort of taken note of all the usual places where where kind of winds up and where, you know, just, Things like on the back of the guitar, you know, this little section juts out. So there's always usually a chunk of paint taken off there. So he's really he's really taking care to um, have those kind of details in there. So, anyways, I thought it, I thought that the the LPJ was uh, was original. Um, and fast forward probably almost a year, and I was in Nashville playing a show and shooting some videos for my friends at Carter Vintage, and I played this all gold '54 gold top in you know, rap tail. And it was like 22 grand US and was obviously, you know, unobtainium for me. The guitar was made of un unobtainium. And, uh, but it was amazing. And I'd, I'd, I had never really played um, a Les Paul that made me feel that way when I picked it up. And the pickups were really incredible. And just the, the, the tone and the neck and just the way it looked and its wear and all that. So I, I kind of, this idea popped into my head. Well, I wonder if... Alex would build one because I know that he does gold tops. And um, he, uh, I reached out to him and said, hey, I've played this instrument and I fell madly in love with it. And now I can't stop thinking about a gold top rap tail. And um, would, you, would you consider building me something? And you know, what would it take? And he responded with, well, I don't actually take orders. I just build what I feel like building and then I, I sell them. But you just happened to ask for the right guitar because really, I've been really interested in building a, an all gold rap tail and um, and I also just started listening to your band and I really like your record so it was just kind of like the perfect and since then since I've been playing this guitar he gets he's been getting a lot of orders and he has to turn them all down because he's he doesn't actually build f for money he builds because he loves these instruments and and it's sort of his tip of the hat to these you know the the original vintage Gibson guitars which are obviously amazing and um, so anyway that's kind of the story there, and um, when we started talking about it, I, I mean, I kind of I play in a in a weird tuning, and so there's certain things that needed to be taken into consideration when sort of adjusting the setup. And he, you know, we got really fussy about um, the uh, the radius of the fingerboard, and you know, I mean, he does like the the nuts are made of nylon because they were made of nylon back in the 50s, and you know, the switch tip on this guitar was. It's it's like C and seed from a laser etching of an original one, so the shape is right, and it's made of vintage cattle and rod. Like it's actually this is actually from the '50s. This switch tip, which is kind of ridiculous, um, but awesome. And these these pickups were wound by the people over at Throwback on the same machine that that would have wound the pickups in the '54 that I played. So this is as close. This is this is a this is a poor man's fifty four, which is still a pretty expensive guitar, but um, a lot more affordable, certainly for me. Um, yeah, and all, all the details are just kind of right. And um, you know, Alex spent the better part of a year finding the right wood because he wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be too heavy, 
because at the end of the day, like I think a lot of people shy away from these guitars because because they're heavy. So he, you know, he was knocking on chunks of mahogany until he found something that he found what felt was resonant enough, um, but also light enough. So this guitar is, doesn't doesn't weigh a ton. Um, and um, and the only change that I've made to it is I I've put this um, really effective but highly ugly bridge on, um, and that's just because any of the compensated wrap tails don't work because I'm tuned to an open tuning. So the compensated bridges actually make the intonation even worse. So I'm in the process of, he and I are in the process of trying to figure out exactly what the intonation needs to be set to in order to, to play right. And then we're gonna, I think we're gonna try and find somebody who can mill us an actual aluminum bridge. Um, you know, partially because there's, there's sort of tonal consequences, but mainly just to get the look right. You know, it should be a chunk of aluminum and not, um, although this bridge is very effective and I'm very grateful for the intonation that it brings. It's, it's not quite the right look, you know? Don't look at it, don't even look at it. Um, but um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those guitars that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to have a great guitar collection. Um, but whenever, you know, whenever I sort of go to grab an ax off the shelf, it's always this one. Um, I'm really inspired by this instrument. It's very vibrant and it's got a personality of its own. And, you know, there's little quirks. Um, the pickups are noisy. Um, you know, the intonation is not perfect. Um, but it's just, it's what I want to play when I pick up a guitar. And that's really important to me, you know, um, that there's inspiration. So, and this, this guitar provides me with an endless, endless uh, font of inspiration. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, as far as my setup, um, action is pretty high. Um, and, and because I'm tuned down to open C, which is C, G, C, E, G, C, or 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, same as open D or open E, but down a, a, a full step or two, depending on sort of where you come from. But, um, and uh, I've got heavy strings on here, so the, the high E string, E string, is a 19, and the low E string is a 65, or 64. And uh, so it goes 19, 22, 26, 40, 50, 64. Um, and, I mean... Tension-wise, I think it's kind of equivalent to a set of 13s in standard tuning, maybe slightly more, but it's, uh, it, you know, you can do a bend, but you, you don't really want to do too many of them. <laughs> but it's not like, uh, I think a lot of people, when I say that I'm playing 19s, they kind of go, Whoa! It's, it's not tuned to standard, it would be, I think the guitar would probably just break in half if it was tuned to standard, but tuned down to C, it's a little more manageable. Um, other than that, you know, um, Grolsch beer bottle strap locks. Hmm? Keep it from falling on the ground. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's kind of it. Um, yeah. That's my guitar. <laughs>